Okay, welcome everybody. Um, hope you're all able to log in with no problems. And you should have all been able to have a look at the subject picture and also a version of that, that picture of painting I did a couple of weeks ago um, of what we'll do today. Um, I thought I'd try and slow the pace down a little bit and also leave a few moments in between each step for any questions. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sketch and talk about composition. Uh, I'll leave a few minutes break for everyone to have a sketch as well and ask any questions. Give me some time to answer. We'll do an initial wash. Let that dry and talk some questions again. And we'll move on to some bigger shapes, more questions, and then we'll do some final details, people's buses uh, and the water at the end. Um, so yeah, hope you're all okay. I'm just going to double check if there's anyone logging in. And that's it. Cool. Uh, I really hope you're all well uh, in these difficult times and uh, dealing with whatever situations you may have as best as possible. Um, we had well over 300 people in the end view last week's workshop, whether that be live uh, or a couple more hundred extra on YouTube afterwards. And uh, I'm just blown away by everyone's comments and uh, thanks. And it was great to see so many fantastic paintings uh, and different efforts from last week. So please feel free to send me your paintings afterwards. I'd love to see them. And uh, I'm just happy that we can all paint together. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about composition. Uh, we, we did talk about composition last week. Um, so I will touch on some things and repeat some things again. Um, but first off, we'll just look at lines. So what are we going to draw? So I really just want this line here to be just about two thirds of the way down the paper. And this is roughly just going to be our horizon. It's going to be the top of the wall just in front of Big Ben. And it's also going to be the top of the bridge. So we've got our heaven and we've got our earth. Now we're just going to look at the big shapes. Whenever we draw, we're just looking at big shapes first. We're not looking at detail because we just want to see if it looks right. Okay. So I've got that wall coming into the water. Just across halfway the page, I've got almost where the wall meets the bridge. And that bridge is just going to come down into the corner. So just looking at some rough shapes. We've got some trees here. We've got Big Ben here. And this is just going to be really, really rough. And uh, we're just going to see how these shapes look on the paper first before we go into any detail. We've got the side of the Houses of Parliament coming up here. And we've got that front part of the Houses of Parliament here. Got that little gap here between Big Ben and the other side of the, uh, the buildings. And then we've got these lovely buildings breaking into the sky with this detailed roof. Cool. So these are our initial shapes. Does everything look right? Is the perspective correct? Is there anything we can readjust before we go into any details? Okay. Before we just go into the details, along with looking at the composition of the lines and perspective, we can also start thinking about tones. Now in the picture, it's a nice blue, sunny sky. Uh, I, I do want to break that up with some clouds. I want the tower to pop out a bit. Because of that, I'm going to leave the area behind it fairly bright, maybe a bit of white paper, but not too much colour. And the more colour clouds will be over here. I also want to start thinking about where everyone is going to be looking in the painting. Uh, and to get people looking there, I want that colour or tone to be the most vivid. It doesn't have to be the most colourful, but it might be the most vivid. That might be a, a strong brush stroke, which your eye is drawn to. It might be the depth of colour. It might be the shape of the objects. So for here, the detail is going to be on the bridge. It's going to be the people walking across the bridge, the bridge itself. Everything else is going to be background or foreground. Cool. So now we can start going in with a little bit more detail with how we're going to look. Again, Big Ben is very detailed. 
but I don't want it to be too much in the in the foreground. I want it to be in the background still. So I will refer to the picture. Am I going to copy everything exactly line for line? Probably not. I really don't want to get bogged down too deep in the details. So it's going to be nice and loose so that when I do paint over it, I can still roughly see the lines underneath, but the lines aren't too straight and uniformed that I have to stick exactly to how it looks in the photo. I want to be able to almost paint by feel and go by what I'm feeling with the atmosphere and the tone of what I'm painting. Again, I will leave some time after I finish this sketch for you guys to finish sketching off for yourself. Don't feel you have to hurry or rush. Uh, if you weren't aware, last week's workshop was I did was able to post on YouTube. Um, so there's a little bit more to watch there. If you didn't catch quite catch everything the last time, it's no problem. Going to keep the, the pencil flowing across the paper. There's loads of detail here. If I try and put everything in, I'll be here all day. Again, don't forget, this is just going to be background to the main part of the painting. trees here these buildings are just gonna fade off you can see there's a few more buildings here in the distance and uh, I'm not gonna fuss too much over them they're just gonna fade off into the distance here okay this building here I love this building because there's so many roofs and uh, chimneys. I think the shapes are a little bit boring, so I'm not gonna do just these huge big chimneys. I will add a few little bits and pieces in to break it up. Uh, I'm honored. Uh, one of my extremely talented tutors is, uh, has joined us, Roberto Zangarelli. Buongiorno. Come over, the master. I've been fortunate enough to be on uh, some of Roberto's workshops. He's uh, an absolute master. He's taught me so much and I've learned a lot from him. Uh, his video workshops are fantastic as well. If you're able to, uh, to Google Roberto Zangarelli and uh, look at his workshops as well, they are absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend you checking out his workshops as well. Uh, one of the leading watercolor experts in the world, in my opinion. This is all gonna fade off. This is gonna be some, some green and some trees. And now we get onto our bridge. Now, if you look in the picture, you can see the, the kind of faded copper green of the bridge. Um, I've just saw in your message, Ola, uh, the picture is on my Facebook page. If you scroll down a little bit from the live feed, you'll see the photograph of what we're working from. So the bridge, it's a really nice copper green. It's uh, a really, really nice color to paint. You'll see that there's some lamp posts here and there's also some big beams coming down here. Now in terms of composition, I'm gonna eliminate those lamp posts and those beams. 
because those beams block out these lovely arches that give us a bit of perspective perspective that lead us into the, the picture and lead our eyes right down this bridge. Sometimes I might put these lamp posts in. For today, I'm gonna to leave it out. Uh, please feel free to put them in if you want. So I want a bit of curvature to this bridge. Now I wanna look at where the bridge is gonna finish and where it's gonna end and we'll start. And I just want a little bit of bend or curve to this bridge, okay? I'm gonna make it a bit smaller here. So now I can fiddle around with this. I want the beginning to be a bit shorter and I want it to really come towards us here. So I'm gonna eliminate this line here. Get rid of this, get rid of this, cool. Now we can just look at the perspective of these arches. How high are the arches gonna come? Well, first off, I wanna make this a small start and a bigger finish. And I'm gonna mess around with this until I get the perspective right. Sometimes I'll do two, three, four, five lines until I think I've got it. Okay. I think that's looking a bit better. And I might just flatten this line out a bit here. Don't normally rub stuff out. I just normally keep going, but I'm, I'm gonna rub it out for you guys. So you don't look at my terrible mistakes and wonder what the hell I'm doing. Again, this is an example of, of something, this would be the only thing I fuss about, not so much the detail, but just getting the perspective right. Does it look right? Is it really leading my eyes into the picture? Cool, okay, how high are the arches gonna come? I think they're gonna come roughly about this high. Just underneath that white line. Start with some small ones. A bit bigger, a bit bigger, and then we'll finish with this big one right in front of us. Right here. Uh, rather than put these huge big posts in, we'll just put these little blocks in at the end. These will almost be in the shadows. We won't see too much of them really. And I'm gonna leave this bit white here. So I'm gonna make this line fairly uh, clear for my own benefit to know that I'm gonna leave this part here white. And I'm also gonna leave this part here white. And it's just gonna get thinner and thinner as we fade into the distance, just to give us that look of perspective. Cool, I also wanna leave a little white line here. I'm gonna leave a very, very thin white line here underneath the top of the wall. And I'm gonna leave a very thin white line here of these small steps leading down into the water uh, that you've probably seen into the River Thames before. Fortunately, this bit is gonna be black again. So I've done the same as what I've done last week, which is hilarious. And use this palette really, really close. Okay, so a bit more final detail on the bridge. How's the rest of the bridge gonna look? Well, we've gotta have the other side of the bridge, which would just be here. We're gonna have some people here. These are gonna be very small in the distance. They won't really be people. They'll just be bits of white, spots of paint. few people here in the distance walking across the bridge and then here's where our eyes going to be drawn to hopefully going to put a little bit more detail into two figures here walking across the bridge on a nice sunny day these are our characters telling the story
and it's London, so uh, we've got to have a bus. The bus will just be fading across. Again, no huge details here. Uh, I'm just going to leave the windows on this side white. So just a reminder for me to, to leave some gaps there. And this will all fade away. Maybe we'll put the taxi in this time. Just another cut. Okay, so there it is. Just some real basics. And not a ton of detail. So it's taken about 50 minutes. Uh, I'll give you guys another two or three minutes uh, to finish off any, any parts that you want to do to your sketch. Uh, in the meantime, over the next two or three minutes, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them on the, the Facebook live stream there. And uh, I'll do my best to answer them before we move on to the initial wash. Love this. What is that going to be? We'll find out later on. Cool. Grab yourself a coffee, carry on sketching. A any questions, just type them in, I'll do my best to answer. Diane, hi from Iowa. The deer, the sun's already set, hang in there, turn the lights on. Deepika from Mumbai, hi. Muzzo, ciao from Italy. Sandra, joining us from Florence. Hi Helen, joining from Dublin, fantastic. Odile from France. Bonsoir, comment va? Angura from Germany. Silesia from Argentina. Fantastic. Uh, Juan, the paper's not sent in the screen. Yeah, completely agree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and leave a bit of area here so you can see just a bit of the palette. Uh, and that's something I'm going to work on. Try and find... Uh, uh, find a way for you to see a little bit of the palette. Um, Ariani said move it left a little bit uh, I'm going to put the pencil down now that is the edge of the page that should be just on the edge of the screen just so you can see what colours I'm using here in the palette good Akiko morning from California good morning Ola I hope you found the picture okay Roberto ciao fratelli okay Cool, no questions. Okay, fantastic, cool. So, initial wash. Good, my uh, my cousin Auster has just joined from Iceland. Hi, hi. Okay, initial wash. Now, if you look at the photo and if you look at the painting I did earlier on, and we'll I'll just show you the painting again. If you haven't seen the painting, uh, we're going to look to recreate this somewhat. Because there's so much depth here in terms of colour and tone, I don't want to go too deep in the sky. If both have the same dark tone, uh, we're not going to be able to look anywhere or focus. So while this is going to be quite light to make the tower stand out, a little bit darker here. And we want to get lighter here so our eyes are drawn in down the tower, down the bridge to look here. And that's really what we're looking for. So we've got the contrast of these tones here. And we've got our eyes being drawn into the colour, the detail and the brush strokes here. So a, a little bit more of uh, planning the painting uh, and looking at different tones where our eyes drawn to. So 
we don't want the sky to be too uh we don't want the tone to be too deep really i'm just going to use a, a little bit of gray first a little bit of uh, neutral tint and these will hopefully be the darkest brush strokes that we'll get in the sky. I'm just going to get a bit of cobalt blue. I'm not going to use a lot of pigment. I just want this blue to register across the sky. I'm not putting a lot of pigment on my brush at all. Just enough. Now while it's still wet, I'm almost gonna use a bit of clean water now. I just wanna soften up these edges. Just so that the sky registers as a sky. This will become bright in the backgrounds and should hopefully make the rest of it pop off the page a bit. Now I'm going to take the water out of my brush and just clean up these edges. I don't want any too harsh edges in here. Going to get into the buildings now and we're, we're just going to put a, a loose bit of colouring in here and uh, I just really want this to fade into a, a bit of yellow ochre here I'm just going to leave some white areas here so I can pick off what I want later on This will fade into a, a green for the trees later. I'm using some yellow ochre, a bit of grey grey. Again, this is just the background, so I'm not too bothered about it. I just want to give it a little bit of depth for when we put our, uh, our second wash on top. Going to be really careful to cut around the bus. I want the red to pop on the edges. And there will be some white windows here on the bus as we're looking contra jour into the light. So because the light is behind the tower, it will come through. There'll be some dark shadows here, some really dark shadows here, and this side of the bus and this side of the building. Uh, will be hopefully be the brightest areas of, of the picture along with the road sweeping down uh, Linda asked is the paper dry yep before I, I did the sky uh, the, the paper was dry and uh, I'm just going to use some some really uh, light gray now for the road going across the bridge I want to be careful to uh, just to cut out these cars blend it into the background and uh, I want to go around these people here and I 
really want this to fade almost into nothing so I'm just going to use some uh, some just water here go around these people again be careful I want to use this the white line here to come across the top of the bridge almost like the handrail at the top of the bridge so I want that to be a real straight uh, clean line if I can and this is just going to fade in off the picture okay now the green for the bridge and the gray for this back wall I'm going to use a neutral tint and uh, I'm going to go left to right as, as I've been doing mostly here And I think this, this wash we're going to do now is almost going to be the final wash. And although it's a big area, uh, I'm going to use a smaller brush to do this wash. I need the fine point to really get a, a clean, thin line across the top of the, the uh, this back wall and going across and down here. So I'm going to use my, uh, my trusty Holbein uh, mop here. I like it, holds a lot of water. It's got this wonderful fine point uh, at the end to get you some really crisp edges. So we'll go in probably a bit weaker than what, uh, what I'm thinking of doing. And I'm going to mix a, a lot more up here. So there's our first part. Now I want a clean line underneath. And uh, I want to get a really nice thin line just underneath this wash here, just to give the impression of these steps coming down. Because this area of the bridge is going to be very dark, uh, I can come into this later on and make it a lot darker. And the same with the bottom. The bottom will blend into the water. It will be a lot darker, uh, so it's going to be easier to blend it in. Now this line doesn't have to be completely white the whole way across. There are going to be little parts where it can meet. I just want to give the impression of a top part of the wall, maybe where the water line comes to. And I want to keep this wash part of the wash alive. So I'm just going to give it a bit of spray. It's going to keep the paper wet the paint wet so we can go into it later on just so it's not so flat and this is where the fine point of the brush comes in very handy to give us this line down very light at the moment I do want to make it a bit darker in places so I can go in and just drop some uh, more saturated pigment in just to break up the monotony of that color it's gonna get really dark in here later on Um, we'll just drop a bit of green in as well.
Okay, so. Now we come onto the green for the bridge, just the first initial wash. Now getting this color right is gonna be a bit tricky. Uh, I'm gonna use some sap green. This is probably really the, the only color I'm gonna really uh, fuss about getting right. Um, the first wash is gonna be very light and I'm gonna be really careful to leave two white lines of the bridge uh, leading our eyes into the picture. So I'm going to use some sap green, I'm going to use some grey of grey and to make it even whiter I'm going to use some Chinese white and sometimes the great thing about bordering the paper with masking tape is uh, I can just give a little practice bit here just near to where I'm going to use just to see if the colour actually matches what I want to use. Okay, I really want these parts here to be have a lot of white in them as well. So I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna work from, from right to left, which I don't normally do. And I just wanna make sure that I'm leaving this white line in with the road and it's gonna fade off here. So I want this here to be a lot lighter. So I'm gonna clean my brush out of all the pigment going to come in almost with just some clean very loose green water I'm just going to push this paint into the water and we'll see what happens now the second part now I just want to make this line at the bottom a bit cleaner as well and this will fade off cool Underneath, we're going to come into on top of all of this, what we're doing here later on. I want this part here to be quite dark, but I'm going to do this top line first. Again, this line's going to lead us in, so I want it to be thin at the top. Come in bigger, 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 bigger bigger so that white line is getting bigger and bigger as it gets closer to us maybe we'll leave some white lines here and this is all just going to be an underwash uh, for what we're going to use later on I'm just using the, the top of the brush just to flick not really applying the paint, I want it to be nice and loose here as we go into the distance. Lots of white and there'll be lots of darker greens coming in there later on. I'm now going to just do the last, last part of the wash is just going to be an underwash here of the water. I want the water here to be quite clean and white there will be a shadow or a reflection almost of uh, Big Ben the shadow of the bridge so just as we get closer the tone of the water will just get a bit deeper and we'll, we'll just go into some uh, some kind of grey dirty blue so this is almost just clean water it's a little bit grey We just want this to, the tone to get just a bit deeper. Uh, the paper I'm using is Lorenzo Santoni. It's uh, Italian handmade paper. Uh, Lorenzo makes it himself, I think close to Fabriano in Italy. It's a very textured paper, as you can see. If I don't push my brush really hard, you get these lovely highlights here and uh, I wanted to use this paper so we could get some real good dry brush marks uh, coming in here. This will all be black and a very dark tone. This will all be a very dark tone. I just want to get the tone a, a little bit deeper as that water gets close to us. Okay, so that's the initial washes. All done. We're about halfway through the painting. Uh, we're gonna let this dry. Um, I'm gonna use a hairdryer just to speed up the process a bit. 
However, at the same time, if you have any questions, uh, please post them uh, onto the, the live stream page. Um, I haven't seen any questions for the last couple of minutes. So while I'm drying this, please feel free to type any questions uh, and hopefully I'll answer them uh, while that's dry enough. Okay, we should be good. Obviously, the, we're going to come in now and do the tower, house the parliament, this building. We'll start with the roofs, work our way down. Um, so this will almost still be drying while we're doing this. I just wanted to make sure this part was dry first. Um, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. Any questions, let me know. Um, this is the second workshop uh, I've done live online. Um, please, apologies if... I'm not getting something right if the light isn't right, if you can't hear me. Um, I wanted to use this bit just so you could see a bit of the colour and the mixing. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to do one more free workshop next Friday, which is April 24th. Uh, and then I'm going to keep doing workshops on the Friday um, after that, starting May 1st. Um, those ones will just be £5, so you, you're more than welcome to join and log on. They'll be just over an hour, probably uh, 70 minutes all in all, um, and yeah, please please feel free to, to join us for them. Good, Shiva said, uh, Steve, is that sap green you use for the bridge? Any color that's added into it? Yes, just a real pale sap green with some gray of gray and a bit of white. Uh, there's gonna be lots of uh, darker greens going over that. I wanted this to be a little bit lighter. I've probably put a bit too much gray of gray in there. It's not the end of the world, we can make it work. It's no problem. Good, I own thanks. It doesn't look much at the moment, but most paintings don't normally look much at this stage. So uh, here's where we have to have a bit of faith that it's gonna turn into uh, uh, what we're trying to convey and uh, we have some fun on the way. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start mixing uh, a darker green, probably a bit more of a, a hooker's green in here for the tops and the tips of these turrets for the roof that we'll come onto later. Uh, I'm going to start with a bigger area first, work my way onto here, we'll fade it down and across. So I'm going to mix this kind of uh, dirty kind of yellow ochre, pale brown colour first. So that as soon as I've done the tips of this, of Big Ben, and these tips here, I can get straight into putting the, the second wash in. So I'm going to mix two colours now. I'm going to mix this dark green, uh, and then I'm going to mix this kind of yellow ochre in my palette first, before I go into it. Again, this is where I wanted to show you my palette. Uh, I may even uh, move this across a bit. It's going to be a bit of a strange angle. Um, but hopefully you can see uh, a little bit more of the palette and uh, the colours that I'm going to be mixing. So I want this green here to be a lot darker. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to use a lot more um, of this hooker's green. I don't want it to be so vivid though. So uh, I don't want to use, lose the darkness. So I'm going to use bits and pieces of what I've got here. I'm going to use a little bit of grey of grey. That's just going to bring the tone down just a bit. It's still very vivid green. 
might use a bit of this cobalt blue just to cool it off a bit more and we'll see how it looks. So I've got the main light part here and I've got some dark bits on the outside that I can dip into it uh, and I'm going to use the brush that I'm going to use to paint it. Now I'm going to leave that brush there in the paint because I want to go back and mix the colour of the actual Houses of Parliament. Something I forgot to do at the beginning is just give a bit of life to all my dry paint here. Some of it's wet, some of it's dry and it just helps to mix it later on. Cool, I want to get this colour right. Um, this yellow ochre is very vivid at the moment. We'll go in with a bit of grey of grey. If you've guessed, I like, do like using grey of grey. Again, it's still very bright colour. So a bit of raw umber. It's going to make it a lot darker. I want to get a lot of this. So I want to add a lot of water, a lot of pigment. Again, it's still very bright. I want it to be a lot darker. See the, con the, the difference in contrast between these two colors. It, it, it's too much. And I, I really want to tone this down. It's too warm and bright. So I'm going to use a little bit of neutral tint here. It's going to make it really dark. I don't mind that because it's going to bring it closer to this in tonal value. Now just a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use titanium white. Titanium white is very uh, opaque. So you can see that when titanium white mixes, how opaque it is. It really affects the tone of the color. If I use Chinese white, which isn't as opaque, it's a lot more transparent, it won't affect the tone so much. Again, I want this to be probably the, the coolest or the less saturated tone. I can come in with darker colors on top once I've done. Okay, so those are colors. And I will do a little test as we hit the paper as well. Sometimes you mix paint and then the palette looks great and then you put it on the paper and uh, it's not what you wanted. <laughs> but the great thing of watercolor is you, you do have time to go back in and change it. So I want this to start of a really fine point. I've loaded the brush up, but not too much. And as I'm bringing it out the palette, I'll twist it just to make sure it keeps the fine point I can use for this part here. Now already I can see it's a little bit too uh, too bright and vivid. I almost want to dirty it a bit more and cool it off a bit more. Experienced painters will will see this way before I do. Um, I'm still a uh, still learning, finding my way and uh, learning as I go with a lot of things. Thanks for joining the journey with me. Again, I'm, I don't want this to be perfect. It's just gonna be a uh, very loose at the top here. I'm going to try and get a bit of texture coming down here. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down with this green here. I'm going to come to about here at the moment because uh, I do want to blend it in eventually um, with this kind of dirty uh, brown grey of the tower. I'm just going to put a few neutral tint highlights in here. And 
and uh, a little bit more of a, uh, a lighter grey and green just to give it some highlights. I'm going to go back in, I'm going to put some paint here. Not a lot, uh, but enough to run into uh, what we're going to do now. I'm going to switch brushes. So now I go back to the, the bigger mop brush that I use. It's going to be uh, this kind of light, very light yellow ochre, dirty kind of grey of Big Ben. I even want it a little bit lighter than this. Okay, it's better. The circle I'm just going to blend in, uh, it's just going to be a, a pale grey face. Okay, so here's where the green will run in. I'm just going to load it up with that colour. If I've put a lot of paint up here, it will run down too far. If I haven't put enough in, it won't run down at all. I'm hoping it will run down just to about here and just blend in to the, the main colour of that tower. I think this bit here dried so I'm going to go back in with just a bit of green and that will fade down. How far? We don't know but let's, uh, let's enjoy it. Okay, time to do the rest. Kind of has these bits sticking out at the side, these little gaps. Again, we're painting contour into the sunlight. Um, so the front of this tower isn't going to be too, uh, too light really in reality. And uh, this side will be the darkest. As you can see, there's loads of green running in here, more than, than what I wanted, but I don't care. It'll, uh, Gives it a really interesting kind of uh, colour. I hate painting straight lines. I don't mind painting straight lines this way. I can use the tip of the brush. This way I find difficult. Sometimes I'll actually, uh, I'll actually take this off and turn it upside down. And this will do two things. It means the point of my brush can still make a straighter line. It also means that some of this green will actually fade off and run back into where I want it to go. So, we've got a bit more of a straight line here. We can add into this wash. And I want to keep this bit alive. So, a quick spray. And we'll turn it back up again. Now I want to keep this bit of the painting alive. I don't want it to dry. So, just load it up with a bit more paint. And this kind of globule of paint, if it hasn't dried, it won't leave an edge. If it does dry, it will leave a really hard edge that I don't want. So that, that's something I'm just going to keep an eye on. Okay, I go back to the green. I'm going to fade it off a bit with some, uh, some gray of gray. So it's not going to be as strong as the top of Big Ben. And I just want to come in and get this bit here. Hopefully you can see, move this back a bit. Okay, I think that's good. Oops, not for fly. And we're going to go quickly here. These ones are going to be in the shadows, so I'm going to darken these up a bit. And 
and they're almost just going to be silhouettes. There's not going to be too much detail at all. Okay, front of the Houses of Parliament. I want these to be a, a lot lighter. Again, this will just fade in here. careful to join this up I still want to leave a white line at the top of the uh, this back wall of the River Thames and I also want to leave some paper for these people in the distance so I'm just going to leave some white bits here and here and these will just be really small people in the distance We now go darker as we get into the shadows. So I'm just going to make this a bit more uh, darker as we come in. Blend it in here with the top of the, the houses, the parliament. Uh, someone's asked what paper I'm using. It's a uh, handmade paper by Lorenzo Santoni in Italy. Uh, it's very rough textured paper uh, I love it again it's uh, something that Roberto Zangarelli um, turned me on to I really like this this paper it's fantastic and we just want to blend this in here with the bottom here so hopefully this should still be wet this line here it's going to be really easy to blend this in and we want a real shadow to come across here eventually so this uh, this lighter colour can just come down. Now th this paper here is just drying off. Um, while that's drying here, I'm just going to go in with some darker lines. Not too much detail. And uh, I just want to see if I can get the, the kind of ribs in. here there's a quick test now as you can see it's starting to bleed out quite a lot so it's not as narrow as I want it so that's my first test I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna come in a bit later with that but I will go in quickly and just give this uh, almost just a little bit of a pale dirty wash in here and uh, We'll come back in with a bit of detail for the clock face later. And if we're lucky, we can just blend the edges in a bit here. Okay. Bottom shadows. Let's try and make this a bit darker. And we can start making these a bit dark here. So this is just a bit of neutral tint mixed into uh, the colour that we, we, we used earlier on. And uh, we can come in and make some uh, few highlights here of these bits of roofs. And whatever that is there. We'll come in later on and use uh, a few more darker brush strokes on these pieces above us when it comes time to the to do some of the, the final details. I'm 
I'm just going to leave some of these little white highlights here. For little people at the bottom of this bridge. I just want to come in here a bit darker, make it a bit more of a shadow coming across. Lots of white I've left here and uh, I'm just going to go back in and uh, darken it up. Okay, question is, can I go in with this darker color without it bleeding too much? Will it be too wet or too vivid? There we go, that's a bit more, less of a contrast. I'm just going in with a slightly darker pigment here. It's almost uh, too wet here to go in, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if we can fade these uh, dark ribs into the shadow. Okay, now we need to blend this in to some trees, so. I'm going to use the green we'll go a bit stronger as we get towards the bottom. Careful to leave some gaps for some people here. Just some clean water, just to blend it in. And a bit of clean water just to break this line here. Soften it off into the distance. Don't like that, that was too straight. There we go. Okay. We have Anna joining us from Potsdam. Hi, Anna. Hope you're well. Okay, so now we're gonna come onto this building here. I don't want it to be exactly the same color as, as, Big, as Big Ben itself. Um, I want it to be a, a little bit more of the gray it is in the picture I'm going to ruin this now by trying to make it a cleaner line it's bringing off too much of the paint underneath so we just leave it and uh, have some fun with it okay seven o'clock already I'm taking way too long hopefully if you can uh, you can stay with us that would be wonderful And uh, hopefully I've got enough battery power in my phone to keep going as well, which would be nice. Okay, I'm going to start with the roof first. So we go back to this, uh, 
this kind of a dark dirty green that we've used for the roofs a quick test to see I want it a bit darker for camp yeah this is just all very abstract just breaking up the sky get this a little bit darker here And uh, I just want to fade away now as we go into the distance here. Let's lighten up this uh, details on these buildings. Some clean water here we want to blend this side of the building into these trees very weak and very green some people down here I just want to edge out okay and now the building running out of uh, air is this huge pallet so I'm just going to clean it a bit off and we get into this, uh, this almost grey colour here I'm going to keep a, a cup the pigment in this roof alive just want it all to blend in quite a, uh, a fairly dark ground here I want to leave a little broken line just to signify where the, the roof ends and the building begins and we can let this run into each other Get 
again this is going to be quite dark so I don't want to leave too much uh, paper but I do want the roof to uh, to fade in if we can and this side of the building is going to be very light I just want to highlight a few windows here on this side, and that's about it. The buildings are just going to fade off into the distance. Okay, I want the tone to get a little bit darker as we uh, we come down to this bus. Give us a nice clean edge to the roof. This, uh, these green trees will just fade into the building. to be too uh, of a flat line very green here we can saturate this a bit more and the same hit Forget we have the side of our bridge here as well. It's going to be a nice light green, and because it's going to be light green, I'm going to darken up the green that we have here, so it's a bit more of a contrast. Some darker windows now here. This should be uh, still be a little bit damp, so some of it will blend in. Tried very quickly in some areas, and uh, some bits it will just run down and fade off. I'm not too bothered. Still background. Okay, enough of this building. Okay, the bridge. Now, we we'll get to mix some deeper green here. On a couple of different uh, colors of green here, but uh, I'm gonna use pretty much uh, hookers green. I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing so I'm going to use a synthetic brush and uh, I want to go from small thin lines 
to much bigger lines. So that the first one I'm going to do is this top one. Uh, I want to get a real fine point here. And I want to go underneath this white line I created. And it will be just a slightly, slightly broken, broken line. I want it to get a bit thicker as we get here. I've almost got too, too much wet paint on the brush here. So I want it to be a bit more of a drier brush stroke. line here underneath again I might do it this way here so it fades away it's not perfect and I don't mind that at all now I want to go underneath now and we'll, we'll do a few lines that are going to come down um, from this top I'm going to make a bit darker to be a bit greeny. As we get further away, these lines get closer and smaller and less, uh, less obvious until there's no real pattern. I'm going to go in with a bit of thicker paint here. And also, even just a bit of clean water, just to break up. All these clean lines. Too straight. Okay. I wanna leave that white line underneath. I'm really happy with that. And uh, gonna dry my brush off go back to the darker colors and uh, let's go left to right I want to go in quite dark here because uh, eventually this will be black and it will mix in to the water and the arches let's see if I can get a thin line coming across here Just very abstract, giving a, a bit of depth to the vision, the viewer. And these lines start getting bigger. Again, I'm just mixing them a palette here, trying to get the right tone. It's a very quick, almost dry brush strokes. The 
use almost pure uh, pure pigment, pure green here. So the colors get more vivid as they get close up. Okay. The water. We're going to start here, fade it down a bit, have the shadow of Big Ben, blend this in to some really dark arches. Um, I'm going to start at the top, work my way down, and we'll come across here. So now I want to mix a quite a dark grey. Uh, I'm going to use neutral tint. Uh, I'm going to use a mop to do so because this is going to be uh, some bigger areas that we're going to paint. And I'm going to wet this here so we can just blend it in. I'm going to make this corner uh, a lot darker than what it is as well. It might look a bit weak to begin with but we'll uh, we'll try and get it dark as we, uh, as we go in. So going to go in with some clean water here. Sometimes with this paper it will actually bleed up. So I'm just going to mop the top of it off a bit. And we'll come in with this darker colour. I will leave a few broken lines here. Just so you can see, it's where the, the wall ends and the water begins. There will, be, there will be less lines as we get here into this darker corner. And you can see it's starting to bleed up a little bit, which uh, is exactly what I wanted. Just so it blends in. And we'll do the same here. Just a bit of clean water, just to fade it in. But then we'll mop up, not mop up, but really just dry off this outside edge so it doesn't bleed too much. Okay, now we go a bit darker. probably haven't mixed enough up here so I'm gonna do a lot more because I don't want the tone to change too much highlights here going down these little towers and now Big Ben itself I'm gonna leave a few little highlights maybe if I can and I'll just go over the top of this with a bit of darker paint as we get closer to the bridge
Again, I want to keep it dark in here, so I don't want it to dry too much. And I want to keep it alive. work my way down so I want to do some darker arches in here these don't have to be too big just a suggestion Try and link the shadows if I can. Again, I can just see the pencil marks I've left for these arches. And uh, that's the yardstick I go by. Now, something I do want to do is uh, I want to fade this shadow up into the bridge that uh, I'm going to do with a little bit of clean water right now. So I switch brushes. Make sure the water's clean. I don't want it to be too uh, too wet. Roberto, <laughs> I'm using the uh, the Holbein uh, SQ1 Black Sable. Roberto was just asking what brush I was using. I like it. It's a, a big mop, not a big mop brush, but it's uh, it's got a fine point, uh, so it's enough for me to uh, get a bit of finer detail in. And now we just make this whatever it is. Okay, the bigger one. This is gonna be a bit darker. I just wanna get the, uh, the line right. Here we go. water to keep us alive and the rest of this is just going to blend in so what I'm just going to do on the uh, the archway here is uh, I'm going to get some titanium white Mix it with just a bit of green, but it's going to be quite wet. And I'm just going to put this titanium and white green mix here. And the titanium white should, uh, should really bleed into the top of our uh, tunnels here. You can see it's just bleeding in there and just softens the edge a little bit. As you can see here, it's just running in just a bit. I don't know what it's going to do, but that's the, uh, that's the beauty of it. This is almost pure neutral tint here. It's very dark. And we'll just bring this into this water here. We'll fade this up in just a moment. Here's all my black marks from earlier on. Didn't care. So there's lots of highlights here. I can just take out the highlights I don't want. Just 
very dark going into here. I still want this to be dark here, so I'm going to try and blend this in before it dries too much. So, clean the brush, bit of water, clean water, and just blend this up. I'm gonna use a bit of tissue here. Sometimes this comes off and looks fantastic. Sometimes it doesn't. But just a bit of light coming, breaking through. bridge of the tunnels okay and gonna break this up just a little bit more just uh, gonna mix a bit of a uh, gray of gray I'm gonna make it very watery gray of gray from whole bean is very opaque it's very watery and I'm just gonna tip the edge of my brush and this should just break up In the tunnel and just give a bit of texture to what a uh, a boring tunnel might be it's going to do a few more uh, wave patterns here I'm going to use again the whole bean I want them to be big here I'm then going to switch to a smaller brush and we'll just use the same pigment. But we'll just fade it off. Smaller, shorter lines. Okay. We're almost there. We will come back in and do a bit more here, but we'll, we'll look at the bridge for now. I'm just gonna do the bus, the people, and we're done. I can't believe my battery is still lasting in my phone. Gonna use some uh, Pyro Red. Um, just gonna weaken it a little bit. This edge to be really crisp. This is where the sun is going. And these are just for our windows. Again, this is pyro red, it's very uh very bright red, I really like it. I'm gonna keep it quite watery at the moment. Uh, Ron has just asked, um, hi Ksenia, hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. Um, Ron has just asked, what is your approach for site errors, if there were any? Um, Ron, could you be a bit more specific? What, what do you mean by, by site errors? Uh, are you talking about perspective? Um, I'd be interested to, to hear what you are what you're referring to. These are too big. And too blocky. I just want these windows really just to, to blend into the rest of the uh, bus. Nothing too detailed. Just all blending in. Ah, okay, 
color issues. Ron, thanks for uh, for verifying the color issue. Yeah, uh, I normally wait until the painting's finished and uh, see how it looks at that time and uh, have a think about what I could have done better afterwards. Um, if I look at color issues during the painting when something's dried, there there really isn't too much I can do about it at that time. But it's a, it's a great question. Okay, I just want the bottom of this bus to get darker as we go down. Till we get to almost a really black kind of red. Just to highlight some wheels. Just connect the shadow with some wheels here, here, a bit of a break underneath. Okay, taxi. It's gonna uh, underneath of this just a bit of a shadow. We can link the shadow to the car, the wheels. Put a titanium white. I just want to make sure we do the other side of this uh, the bridge here before we go on and do the car. Link this shadow into this cart. Some more shadows here. I think we'll just fade this off with some clean water. Okay, the people. So we're gonna mix, uh, I'm gonna do some faces first. So uh, the people far away, 
it's going to be hard to see the colour of their faces. So uh, we'll make it quite a dark skin tone almost, just so it registers. So just a bit of Chinese white and uh, some of the red that we use on the bus. And these are just going to be just people in the distance, just some marks, nothing too detailed. We've got our guy here, make this a bit brighter. There we go, this couple here. And let's get a bit of color in here. I'm gonna use uh, some Horizon Blue right out of the tube. Gonna make sure my, my brush is wet. I'm just getting it right out the tube. Make sure we get his shoulders a bit too wet. That's good for now. We'll go back into that in a bit. Some titanium white right out of the tube. Bit of blue mixed in there, love it, great. And this guy's gonna have a shirt on underneath. And we'll use some ivory black right out of the tube again. Again, I want to leave this white line here, so I'm going to go up to make sure I don't go into what I wanted to leave white. Just wet this off so his trousers blend in a bit. We'll just blend that in there. Okay, want a bit more of a shadow just on this uh, side of the bridge here. So we'll put a bit of color in here. We'll shade. And we'll just blend this in. Okay, that's... Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, probably go in and just put a few more details in here. Again, these are just really rough, broad strokes for our background. I'm not going to fuss too much over it. I might go in with some darker colours here. Again, I can't see much of my pencil lines, so I have to be uh, cautious of the uh, perspective going in here. I don't want to fiddle too much. I'm just going to all be very abstract. Okay, the last part. What's the time? I'm gonna use a really thin brush here. This is a, a nail brush. <laughs> so this is used for painting nails. And uh, I'm just gonna get a really uh, 
not too deep a grey and just uh, just give us a bit of time. And just a few details here. Nothing uh, too visual. And then just a few more dark marks up here. We have these little uh, these little V's. Just a final touch, just a few birds, some London pigeons flying around, just breaks up the space. Okay, and, and that's it really. Um, I think I would have spent uh, a bit more time on some things. Uh, I've already gone for uh, well over an hour and a half of what I wanted to be just uh, an hour. Um, but there we go. I'll probably make a few uh, little additions um, here and there and uh, I'll post the final piece later so you can, uh, you can see how it looked. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please send me your pieces. Uh, I'd love to see them and uh, see how they looked as well. Uh, really enjoyed doing this piece with you guys and uh, stay safe stay well we'll do another free one next week uh, and then there'll be some ones in the following weeks as well i'll give you guys lots of information about those thanks for joining uh, take care and uh, look forward to painting with you guys again thanks <laughs>